A sign. What does a sign do? A sign directs you somewhere. Okay? We had to come out here to uh, the Dollar Tree on Pool Road. I know that this is Pool Road because the sign tells me that it's Pool Road. I know I'm standing in front of Dollar Tree because the sign says that's the Dollar Tree. A sign directs you to something. Read. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. The curses will be upon you for a sign and for a wonder. When our people get shot in the streets and the women ask why, why is this happening? When we ask why is this happening, that's the wonder, the curses. We are cursed for a sign and for a wonder. You understand that? Read. And upon thy seed forever. And upon your seed forever. You got children? Right. Okay. The curses will be upon your child as well if you do not repent. We're going to show you how to repent right after this. Read. Because thou served not the Lord thy God. Because you did not keep God's commandments, you're not serving him. With joyfulness and with gladness of heart. Some people know that they are Israel out here. They know that they're supposed to keep the Sabbath. They know that today is the Sabbath. They know they're not supposed to buy and sell and cook on the Sabbath day and work on the Sabbath day. But they're doing it because they want to do they want to do it. You understand that? And because we did not keep God's laws with joyfulness and gladness of heart, that's why the Most High God put these curses on us. Read. For the abundance of all things, therefore shall... So, now we're about to get into the therefore. Because you do not want to keep God's laws, Therefore, therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. You are gonna serve your enemy. Cause before, bro, all we had to do was serve the Most High God. That's right. All we had to do was keep the laws, and we had everything on His face as earth. But the Most High God said, "You know what? Because you do not want to serve me, you are going to serve your enemies. Serve your enemies in what now?" Watch this. Read. Which the Lord shall sin against thee. Huh? Which the Lord shall sin against us. Why did the Most High God send our enemies against us, Raymond? Right. We didn't want to keep the commandments. Read. In hunger. In hunger, you're going to serve your enemies. And in thirst. Uh -huh. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. Bruh, how do we serve our enemies in hunger and in thirst? Okay? When you thirsty, where do you go to get your drink? You got to go to the store, okay? If you say, okay, I want some tap water, you know what I'm saying? If you don't pay your bill, they're going to cut your water off. We got to think, we got to think uh, uh, deeper into these curses, okay? Our, uh, who owns these uh, bottled water companies? Who owns the, uh, the tap water? You understand that? Your oppressor. That's right. So-called white man. You understand that? It says, and in nakedness, your clothing. Who owns those clothing on your back? When you get home, look at the tag. I, I guarantee you it's going to say made in Taiwan or something. Made in China. You understand that? It's not made by Israel. It's not made by your people. Okay? Read it again for him. Therefore, should thou serve thy what? Thine enemies. Thy enemies with an S at the end. I don't want you to think that this, oh, this is all about the, the so-called white man, because it's not. The scripture says your enemies, because you have more than one, okay? As we read in, in Psalm 83, it said they are confederate against you. They, they don't want you to know who you are. Not the Arab man, not the so-called uh, white man, not the Africans, because we are not Africans. There's a difference between us, the, the Jews, the Israelites, and the so-called Africans. Read. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall sin against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. No matter what you want, Raymond, no matter what you want, you're going to have to serve your enemies. You want an education, Raymond? You're going to have to go to your enemies for that. Do you like doing that? No. You, you, you want um, um, health? You want to be healed? You got to go to your enemies, to the hospital. Bring it out. When you have a child, don't you have to get a birth certificate? You got to go to your enemies for that. Bring it out. You can't write up your own birth certificate. We had to go to our enemies for that. I'm tired of that. I don't want to do that. Read. And he, and he, your enemy, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Look on the front of that, front page of that flyer. See that first image? That's a yoke of iron upon our neck. Did that not happen to us? Yes. Your enemy put that yoke of iron upon your neck. 
Read it, read. Until he have destroyed thee. Do you see that yoke of iron on your neck right now? Because you are destroyed, bro. It says he shall put the yoke of iron on your neck until he have destroyed thee. How are you destroyed? Because you're not keeping the commandments no more. That's right. You're not saying I am an Israelite. That's right. You understand that? That's how we are destroyed. Now, what's a commandment that we need to keep? What's a commandment that we need to keep, sister? Brothers, I'm about to show you. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11. I'm about to deal with the both of y'all right now. Watch this. This is a commandment. Because we love the Most High God, right? Yeah. If we love him, we, we would keep the commandments. Because that's what the scripture tells us to read. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The scripture says, I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. You understand that? So it's establishing order. Stay with me. This, I got to give you this commandment. I got to give him this commandment. Hey, stay with us, bro. All right, Raymond, stay with me, bro. Because this is for you. This, uh, read it again for the brother. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. It says the head of every man is Christ. You are a man, right? So the scripture says the head of every man is Christ. So who's your head? Christ. You point it up. You think Christ and God the same? Huh? Same. But answer me that for answer that for me. You think Christ and God is the same? Is Christ and God the same? She said yes. Is Christ and God the same? That's what I was taught growing up. Okay. Oh, I like what you say. You said that's what you was taught growing up. Hey, the Bible says it's time for us to come out of that tradition. You understand that? In the, uh, in the, in the doctrines of men. Because that's a doctrine of men. We're still being taught that. It's the Trinity. God is the Trinity. Okay. Okay, all praises. Now we're gonna give you some clarity on it. So you, so when you next time you hear that, you know that it is wrong. Read. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. It says the head of every man is Christ. So it's about to establish an order. So right now it's Christ and then the man. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man. Right. She pointed towards us because we are the head of the woman. And, and the head of the man is who? Christ. Read. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. How can God and Christ be the same person if the head of Christ is God? See that law? See that law that we taught? Yes. That was a law in the church. Christ and God is not the same. That's right. So now it is God, Christ, man, woman. That's the order that is set up. Read. Every man praying or prophesying. So when this scripture is coming out, now it's dealing with the man. So it's dealing with the man, sis. So when the scripture is coming out, every man praying or prophesying, uh -huh. having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Who's your head, Raymond? Christ. We don't want to dishonor our head, right? So what must we do? Pray. <laughs> <laughs> Read it again for the brother. Every man praying or prophesying. So when this scripture is coming out, you hear the scriptures coming out, right? right? Having his head covered. If your head is covered, dishonor his head. We don't want to dishonor our head, right? right? So what must we do? Repent. We, <laughs> repent. Let me tell you, repentance is uncovering your head. Right. Because the scripture is coming out. Can you do that? Let me see it. Hey, the Bible says prove all things, bro. We got to read the scriptures. You understand that? So you have to remove your head covering in honor of Christ, your head. <laughs> when you go to the courthouse, right? And, 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 uh, in front of the judge, don't you take your head covering off? Yes. Right. All praises, bro. That's what repentance is. Repentance is stop uh, is stop sinning. You understand that? That's how we repent, brother. That's how we are going to get out of this predicament. You understand that? Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. You are showing honor to Christ right now by uncovering your head. You are showing repentance. You are showing that you love God right now. Read. But every woman, hold up, now it's dealing with the woman. That every what? Every woman that prayeth or prophesied. You married, Raymond? Okay. Well, when you get married, this one is for your wife. 
every woman that prayeth or prophesied when the scripture is coming out with her head uncovered if the woman's head is uncovered when the scripture is coming out dishonoreth her head who's the head of the woman sis you had said it earlier huh no your husband right it's the man right so when the scripture is coming out you don't want to honor your husband you don't want to dishonor your husband do you so you must cover your head, sis. That's right. That is a commandment. You understand that? Did you know that? You shaking your head no. I've been taught different. Right. I've been taught different. What have you been taught? I've been taught that I know it's some religions that the wives have to cover their heads, but I don't believe that. So you don't believe the Bible? So read it again for the sister. But how you doing, brother? What's your name? Daniel, okay, all right. So watch this, Daniel. Read Colossians chapter two, verse eight. Beware, lest any man spoil you. The scripture says, beware, lest any man spoil you. The sister said, that's not what she has been taught. So let's find out if she has been taught the truth or if she has been spoiled through man. Read, read it again. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. It says through philosophies and vain deceit. You understand that? Vain deceit is what they want to tell you. Philosophies are lies according to the scriptures. You understand that? It is in the scripture that we have to cover, the, the woman has to cover her head when the scripture is coming out. It is in the scripture that the man has to uncover his head when the scripture is coming out. Regardless of what man said, okay? What are you going to follow, man or God? Hold that and give me that in Romans. Romans 3. Romans 3 and 3. Hear the word of the Lord, sis. Romans chapter 3 and verse 3. For what if some did not believe? The scripture says, for what if some did not believe? You understand, you understand that, sis? The scripture is coming out. You said, nah, I don't, I, that's not what I've been taught. You, you, you basically say you don't believe that. A lot of people say that they don't believe that. All right, read. For what if some did not believe? Uh -huh. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? It says, should that unbelief make the, the uh, faith of God without effect? So because you don't believe, you understand that? Does that mean that this scripture has no effect? God forbid. Exactly. He shook his head. No. The scripture says, God forbid, sis. It's, not, it's, it's still in effect, whether you believe or not. You understand that? And I, when, I, when I say you, I'm speaking in general. Read. Let God be true. The scripture says, let God be true. But every man a liar. But every man a liar. You understand that? So what thus says the Most High God, let God be true. If God says the man must uncover his head, when the scripture's coming out, the man will uncover his head. If the scripture says the woman has to uh, cover her head when the scripture coming out, guess what the woman must do, sis? What thus said the Lord. This is where you got that doctrine from. Bring it out. From your oppressor. Bring it out. Your oppressor said you do not have to uh, cover your head when the scripture is coming out. But what did the scripture say? Let God be true and every man a liar, sis. So who are you going to listen to? God or man? God. For, yes, a man has to uncover his head when the scripture is coming out to in honor of Christ. Yes, that's a law. That's a step, sis. Repentance is a is a step is a step by step process. You want to say that? You have to know. Let, let me ask you this: What is sin? What is sin? Give me sin. Okay, she said sin is living from the devil. What is sin, brother? Sin is anything bad if you don't live by the Bible, brother. Okay, the brother says sin is anything if you do not live by the Bible, that's sin. Okay, well, the scripture says, let God be true and every man a liar. So we have to bring out what thus said the Lord. Read. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin, the scripture says, whosoever committed sin, transgressive also the law. Uh huh. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the breaking of the law. So when the Bible tells us to do something, if we do not do it, then what are we in? We are in sin. Right. Y'all understand that? 
So when the scripture says the woman must cover her head when the scripture coming out, if she refuses to do it, then she is in what, sis? Sin. Yes. Yes. Yes, sis. Let me show you something. I'm going to show you something. Give me 1 Timothy 2 and 9. Because, sis, that's something that's modest right there. And, brother, when you have a wife, when you get a wife, sis, brother, you teach, your, you teach your wife this. Matter of fact, you can teach your sisters this. Now, you understand that? But first you have to repent. You have to repent and be taught again. You understand that? That's the that's majority of our people's problem. You know, when they come up to the camp, they want to teach the teacher. You're not doing that. Not while I'm on platform. That's right. You understand that? You, you are here to learn, and that's what you're going to do. Read what you got. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also. The scripture says, in like manner also. That women, or that woman, adorn themselves in modest apparel. Adorn themselves in modest apparel. Okay? Adorn themselves in modest apparel. It is modest apparel when a woman has her head wrapped. It is modest apparel when a woman is not showing her cleavage. When a woman is not showing her butt. Okay? That is modest apparel. You understand that? Read. With shamefacedness and sobriety. With shamefacedness. It is a woman. It, it's, <laughs> it is a... Uh, it is righteous for a woman to be shamefaced, not all up in men's face. Read. And sobriety, mm -hmm. not with broided hair. That's, that's all I want. You understand that? That is part of repentance, sis, because our women are out of their natural order. You understand that? Huh? Look, is, that's not modest. I, I look because I, I looked in that direction. Let me tell you something. Wait, I have to see with my eyes, okay? So if I look this way, if something is there, I'm not looking at it to be lusting after it. You know that scripture in Matthews? Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. But I say unto you, so watch this, brother. This is the point, sis. That whosoever lo looketh on a woman to lust after her, whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, you understand that? Have committed adultery with her already in his heart. If I look upon a woman, okay, to lust after her, then I will be committing adultery in my heart. My mind, I will be committing adultery. Okay? Because according to the Bible, your heart is your mind. Because when men look at women, I'm about to prove it to you. When men look at women and they lust after them, they get thoughts in their head. Okay? You can only get lustful thoughts in your head, where your mind is. So according to the scriptures, your heart is your mind. Bring it out. You understand that, sis? Let's sit on that. Okay? So now, let's get to judgment. Let's say if our women refuse to put on the dress. Let's say if our men, refuse, our men and women refuse to put on uh, fringes in the border of blue. Let's say if our men refuse to pull up their pants. What is the judgment? What is the judgment for that? Give me that in Zechariah. Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. And it shall come. Oh, hold on. What if our sisters refuse to put on a head wrap? Because that's the dress code. You got, you, you got a head wrap in this, sis. Okay. But you know for next time, you're going to get a head wrap. Read on. And it shall come to pass. Read the scripture for them again. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass. Meaning it's going to happen. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice. Because Christ will return. You know that, right, sis? You know that, right, bro? The day of the Lord's sacrifice is when Christ returns. Read. That I will punish the princes and the king's children. That the Christ will punish the princes and the king's children. We are the princes. You understand? We are the king's children. Read. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. If you are not in a, in a uh, dress called the attire that the Most High God ordained of the Israelites, the Most High God will punish you. That's right. He will destroy you. Right. You will be put to death. Right. Re yes. Read it again for the sister. 
And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice uh -huh. that I will punish the princes and the king's children right. and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. And all that are clothed with strange apparel. The Christ is going to destroy them. He's going to put them to death. You understand that? That's it on that? Yes, sir. Give me, uh, let me ask you, let me ask y'all a question. How many gates is it to the kingdom of heaven? Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. All, all we doing right now is showing you what thus saith the Lord. And all we doing right now is showing you how special you are. Watch this. How many gates is it to the kingdom of heaven? Let me ask this brother real quick. How many gates is it? Yeah. What have we learned growing up? One. One? How many gates, sis? One? How many gates, sis? What? Give me that in Revelation. Bring it out. Bring it so, out. It's time to get out the church. That's, That's right. It's right. Time, because they teaching you wrong, sis. Bring it out. They teaching us wrong. It's not one. Wake them up. I'm going to show you why they say it's one. Read. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 12. Bring it out. And had a wall, great and high. Go to verse 1, so that way we can get the proper understanding of what's being explained. Read. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 1. And I saw a new heaven. The scripture says, I saw a new heaven. And a new earth. Uh-huh. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Stop. It says the first heaven. The heaven is, is, is right here above you. The sky, that's the heaven. Okay? And uh, the first earth, the earth is what you see. Aren't we on the earth? It said it was what? For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. It was passed away. So look around you, Raymond. Sis, look around you. All that you see is going to be gone. It's going to be gone. How's it going to go? We're going to get that too. That's what on that. Don't it get into how, uh, where you at? Passed away. Okay, okay. Now, go jump down to verse 12. Revelation chapter 21, verse 12. And had a wall, great and high. So, he saw the new heaven coming down. And this new heaven, it had a wall, great and high. So my question was, how many gates is it, is it to the kingdom of heaven? The sister said one, the brother said one. Read it again. And had a wall, great and high. So heaven will have a wall, great and high. And had 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. Had 12 gates. That's right. 12 gates. Who are those gates for? Read. And the names written thereon. On each gate there is a name. Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. You see that, bro? That's how important you are. That's how special you are. Your name is written on that gate, bro. That's right. Yes, sis. That's how special you are. My last name Benjamin. Huh? My last name Benjamin. <laughs> yeah, when it says your name, meaning your tribe, yeah, yeah, yeah. you would be from the tribe of Judah. Yeah. You understand that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, how do we get in, huh? <laughs> Judah, yes. Now, how do we get into the kingdom of heaven? Because you want to go to heaven? <laughs> your name ran on that gate? My name ran on that gate. I want to go in that gate. Sis, you want to go to heaven too, right? How do we get into the kingdom of heaven? Let's get that in Revelation 22. That's it? Yep. yep. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14. Yep. Blessed are they that do his commandments. The scripture says blessed are they that do his commandments. Whose commandments? God's commandments. That's right. If you keep God's commandments, you are blessed. You, you understand that? Read. That they may have right to the tree of life uh -huh. and may enter in through the gates into the city. See? Your name written on that gate. In order for you to get in that gate, what must you be doing, Raymond? Repent. Repent, keeping the commandments. That's right. That's what we must do. Sis, in order for you to get into the kingdom of heaven, what must you do? Repent. You have to cover your head. You got to put the fringes on your clothing, the borders of your garments. What's that? What's that look for? No, you don't have to do that? Why, why not? Okay. 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 Give me Matthews. I mean, that's what I've been Uh, where you at? Let me see. 
the least commandment? Okay. We're gonna get that. I want you to hold that Matthew 18 and 3. But I want the least commandments. I think it's in the five. Matthew 5 and 19. Yep, 5 and 19. All praises. Read. Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. So a least commandment is the fringes. A least commandment is the clothing. The scripture says if you break one of these least commandments. And shall teach men so. When you when you don't keep the commandments, you're teaching men so. Because your children is looking up to you. So when you don't keep the commandments, you're teaching your children not to keep the commandments. Right. Read. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. You shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Now what is the least in the kingdom of heaven? Read. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven if you do and teach these commandments. Read. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. What is righteousness? Hold that. Give me righteousness. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. Because the scripture says, except your righteousness exceeds the scribes and Pharisees. Watch. Give me what righteousness is. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be our righteousness. If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, uh -huh. as he have commanded us. So it shall be our righteousness if we keep the commandments. You understand that? So now I'll go back to that and read that verse over again. Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 20. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness, except your righteousness, except you keeping the commandment, shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. If it don't exceed the scribes and the Pharisees, because what was the scribes and Pharisees doing, sis? Huh? They were sinning. They would, they would tell the people to keep the commandments, but they weren't doing them, right? Read. Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So, sis, the Pharisees would say, wear your fringes, wear your dresses. Okay? The Pharisees would say, keep your beards, but they won't do them. Right. And the, 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 the scripture says they will not get the kingdom of heaven. Right. So if you do not keep the least commandment, where your fringes, you will not get the kingdom of heaven. That's right. That's a commandment, sis. You understand that? Yes. Yes. So whatever you dress, your time has to have fringes. Yes. Every day. Every day. All my attire, yes. I never heard about the fringes, but I have heard about Oh, give me Matthew, what well, he said, 18 and 3. Sis, this is the problem right here. This is the problem, okay? Read. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 3. And said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted. Except ye be converted. How do you be converted, sis? Because it's a lot of things you have not heard yet. Okay? It's a lot of scripture that was brought out that you said, I've not, I didn't hear that before. You understand that? Brother, wasn't the scriptures that was brought out, have you heard it before? No. The scripture says, except ye be converted. Now, the question now is, what converts us? Read. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Stop. It says the law of the Lord is perfect. You understand that? So, if you want to be perfect, you, what, what must you do? You have to keep be keeping the laws, right? Read. Converting the soul. The, the law is what converts you. So now I'll go back to Matthew 18 and 3. Matthew chapter 18 verse 3. And said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, Except you keep the law, And become as little children, And become as little children. When you teach your child, right? When you, te you taught your child the colors, when you told your child, uh, son, this this color right here is black. What did your child say? Say to you. Say black. <laughs> right. The child said that is black. The child did not say, no, dad, that color is brown. No, dad, that color is red. So the scripture says, except you be converted, except you keep the laws and become as little children, 
Okay, read it again. I might, I might have started it. Read it. And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children. And become as little children. Sis, we are the teachers. We are telling you what thus saith the Lord. We just read to you, sis, that when Christ come back, what he's going to do to the people in strange apparel. You're trying to tell us, no. When sis, that was in the scripture, what the Most High God would do, what Christ would do when he returns. You won't get the kingdom, sis, if you do not put the fringes on your clothing, sis. Is that all on that? Read. Now you are hearing it. Read. Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. If you don't keep these commandments, sis, read that in the part again. Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. The commandments, the fringes are the commandments. If you do not keep the fringes, sis, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Yes, that's the dress code that the uh, Most High God gave us. Yeah. Get us into Yes. That's what the scripture says. Yes. Let's get it for her again. Read. First, so listen. First John chapter three and verse four. Because let me tell you something. We have to tell you what thus said the Lord. Okay. Read. You got something, bro? All praise. Hey, shalom, sis. Now, what it is? You you didn't know these laws, right? Before you before you heard it today, right? Did you know? Did you did y'all know about the, the dresses and the fringes and the hair wrap? You see, you never heard about that. A lot of people don't know that God has a dress code. God does have a dress code for his people. And he wants us to adhere to the dress code. You understand what I'm saying? Because what the fringes do, they keep you in check. Like if you having a lustful thought or say you had a spirit on you where you want to steal. Okay? If you're in the store and you got your fringes on, or if you don't have your sister with you to say, hey, don't do that, and you by yourself and you got your fringes on, you're going to say, thou shall not steal. Because your fringes remind you to stay holy, to keep the commandments. Right, your mind and the fringes. It's very, very important. Okay, let's get the fringes. Numbers 15, 38. I'm going to show you the importance, why they're put on our clothes. It's not just a fashion statement. Bring it up. Listen to it. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. Now, the children of Israel, ma'am, are the black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We are the children of Israel. We're not African Americans. We're not Negroes. We're not niggers. We are the children of Israel. That, that is what the God of heaven and earth, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob called us when he created us. Read. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. This is God talking to us. He said, bid them. That means command them to make fringes in the borders of their garments. You sisters, y'all will put these on the bottom of y'all dresses. He said, command them to do this. Read. Throughout their generations. Throughout their generations. He said, we supposed to put this on our clothing throughout our generations. Now, ma'am, how long is that? Throughout our generations. That's forever, right? As long as we keep having children, we teach them to put this on their clothing. Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And now, he said, once you put the fringe on the clothes, on the border of the fringe, you put a blue ribbon up there. This is why. Read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that you may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them. Read that part again. And remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them. So they are put there for you to remember all the commandments of the Lord, and to do them. Now you say, my mind would tell me to keep the law. Let me show you what the God. Let me show you what God said about our mind. Give me Mark seven twenty one. This is why you got to have these on, because sometimes your mind don't be thinking right. 
You know what I'm saying? This, this is what Christ said. Read. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. Uh -huh. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. See what the Bible say? Out of the heart. The, when the Bible talks about your heart, it's talking about your mind. He said, out of the heart of men, proceed what? Evil thoughts. He said, evil thoughts come out of your mind. That's why you need the fringes on so you can remember the commandments of the Lord to do them. Right, but you can start today, sis, because this is your heritage. You know, every every country have their own dress code and the way they live, the things they eat, okay? They have their religious system. This is what God gave us for our heritage. Right, and it's... Our religion is keeping God's laws. Right. What we're bringing out to you, sister, is that this is our heritage that we lost through slavery. Because uh, what? Say it again. It's for, it's for the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. It's for the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? We, we are the ones that's supposed to keep the dress code of the fringes. You sister are supposed to have your hair wrapped when the, when the Bible is coming out or when you're praying. This was all given to the nation of Israel. When Moses delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, you remember that? He didn't deliver everybody. He only delivered the 12 tribes. When Moses went to the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights and came back down with the Ten Commandments and the laws, he only gave them to who? The children of Israel. Right. That was it. So why today, 2020, we think the Bible is now given to everybody. If that was the case, God would deliver everybody out of Egypt. Right. Everybody. God never intended for the Bible to be given to all nations. So these fringes that we have on, they're not for all nations. They're for you, my sister. They're for you, my sister. So, no, you didn't know before, but you're learning today. You're learning how to really love and serve God today. That's why we are here. Christ said, he told the prophets to go out into the highways and the hedges. Where are we at right now? And he said, compel them to come in. That's what we're doing right now. So we have to teach you repentance. You understand, sister? That's what we're doing. We're teaching you how to repent. I know it may seem simple. Oh, you telling me I got to put fringes on? Yes, ma'am. Because it, it may seem like a simple thing, but it's very, very important for your soul. You know what I'm saying? Because, because believe it or not, when Jesus Christ returns, he's going to judge people for what they're eating and what you're wearing. Your pastor is not teaching you that. Bring it out, us. They're not telling you when he cracked that sky, he's going to judge people on what they have eaten and how they are dressing. Did you know that? Did y'all know that? Bring it out. Did y'all know that? You didn't know that? Yeah, Christ, when Christ returned, he's going to judge people for doing those things. Let's show you that. What you got? Bring it up. Go ahead. This is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 8. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. The day of the Lord's sacrifice is Christ returning to bring judgment upon this earth. That's that day. Read. That I will punish the princes and the king's children. Read that part again. Listen carefully, ma'am. He said he's going to do what? I will punish. He said he's going to punish people. For what? The princes and the king's children. Uh -huh. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. You know what? Clothed with strange apparel. Christ, when he returns, he's going to punish those that are clothed with strange apparel. You understand? So if you if, if he come back and you don't have these fringes on, Christ considered that as strange apparel because he told Moses to tell us to put these on our clothes. That was a commandment. That wasn't a suggestion. Christ told us, this is how I want you looking when I return. You understand? So it's going to be a punishment for being dressed out of order. When you get a job, your job has a dress code, right? If you come in, your, if you come to your job dressed improperly, what they going to do? They going to send you home, write you up, or even fire you. So why do we? Why would we think less of God when it comes to how we dress? That's right. Do you understand? You can't. If you work at McDonald's, you can't walk in there with a Burger King uniform on. Bring it out. 
right? Just as just so is the kingdom of heaven. You can't be an Israelite, but you dressing like an American. Y'all, you understand, sister? So let's get the food. Let's just see what's gonna happen if you're eating the wrong types of food. You got that? Yeah. Read. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 17. Uh -huh. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden. So it says, they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden. What we're reading about right here is your ancient churches. They, they the ones that purify themselves in these so-called Christian, Baptist, Methodist, okay, Pentecostal churches. They sanctify themselves. How? Behind one tree in the mist, eating swine's flesh. What? Eating swine's flesh. They in these churches having pig pickings, eating swine's flesh, eating chitlins, pig feet, pig ears, pork chops. What is Christ going to do? And the abomination and the mouse uh -huh. shall be consumed together, uh -huh. saith the Lord. Read. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues. So you see what he said? He said they gonna, those that are eating those things, possum stew, he said you're going to be consumed together. You understand? So when, if people are dressed out of order, they're eating the wrong, they're not following the dietary law, there is a judgment for not doing so. Do you understand, my sister? So this is what we have now learned in, what you say, ma'am? I don't eat that stuff no All praises. But our people not being taught this, because a lot of people, when they, go, when they go get them some breakfast in the morning, what are they going to do? Get them a sausage egg biscuit. That's the first thing on their mind when they go pull up in the drive through Right. You understand? Because we not we have not been taught God's laws on how to eat, on how to dress, on how to love each other. We have to be retaught these things. Give me all John three and three. This is this is this is what it is. And I'm gonna give it back to you, officer. Read. John chapter three verse three. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, We have to be born again. You already born now, but what does that say? You have to be retaught again. You have to change every, everything you ever learned here in America. You got to wipe your memory clean and come back to learning how to truly serve God. What do you say, ma'am? The purple, I would just ask that question <laughs> over there. The, we wear purple because they mocked Jesus Christ. They put a purple robe on them and mocked them, the Roman soldiers. So we wear purple because we mocking America right now. And also purple was a royal color in the Bible. It's royalty. We are royalty. Sisters, y'all are royalty. You understand? So all praises. Yeah, give, let's get the scripture. You got it? 19 to 1. We're going to show you why we wear purple. Read. John chapter 19 verse 1. Uh -huh. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And they, they, beat, they beat him. Read. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put a crown of thorns on Jesus Christ's head. Right. Read. And they put on him a purple robe. They put on him what color? A purple robe. This is why we wear purple. We follow our king, right? They mocking him at this point, but we return in the favor now. Okay, read. And said, hail, king of the Jews. Uh -huh. And they smote him with their hands. So this is what they were doing to our king. They was mocking him. Putting, on a, putting him on a royal color. They knew he was the king, but they mocking him, trying to make mockery of him. So we were in purple because we were making mockery of this place because it's about to burn. That's right. So this is why we out here, my sister, to prevent our people from getting burnt when Christ returns. We don't, we don't want y'all to uh, feel that fire. You understand? What you say, ma'am? All praises, all praises. But listen, I just hope you got a clear understanding of that. Okay, here you go, Officer Jezreel. All praises, all praises. Thank you. Now, I said I was going to get something for you. I can't remember. Uh, go back to 17 and, Jeremiah 17 and 11. I mean, uh, Jeremiah 17 and 4, read it again. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. 
and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. I forgot what I was going uh, I forgot what else I was going to get for you. But, sis, do you understand that, sis? We have to come back to our heritage. That's why we're telling you, sis, you have to keep the commandments because it is your heritage. Okay? All right, I don't know what you're saying. What other commandments? What other commandments? Give me uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. How you doing, brother? This is it. This is the one. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. So the scripture says, remember the Sabbath day. You know why it says remember? Because the scripture just said that we was going to forget our heritage. Now it's time to remember. Remember the Sabbath day. To keep it holy. To keep it holy, my bad. Six days shalt thou labor. Uh -huh. And the, the scripture says the Most High God gave us six days to labor, to do all our work and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. It says the seventh day is the Sabbath. This is the seventh day right here. Read. It is. Thou shalt not do any work. In the seventh day, we are not supposed to do any work. No servile work. We're not supposed to work on this day. What else are we not supposed to do on the Sabbath day? Give, you got something else? I thought Sunday was the seventh day. No. You got a phone? Yes. Pull out your phone. Go to your calendar. Sabbath day coming up. Bro. Hey, bruh. Saturday. Where you going, man? I'll be back. I'll be back. No. I'm about to give you the proper understanding. Why is the Sabbath the Sabbath? Huh? So why, how do you come up with Saturday being the Sabbath? Okay. okay. We're going to show you right now. Get, go to, um, go to uh, Genesis. There's a lot of stuff that I'm getting today. All praises, sis. All praises. Look, sis, we have a school, sis. We have sisters. We have our old, uh, elder sisters teaching the other sisters the righteous way of the commandments. You understand it? The, our, our sisters are teaching one another how to, uh, how to, um, they're teaching um, etiquette, okay? Things like that, okay? These, these are what you need to learn from, sis. You need to learn from the older sisters that we have set up, all right? We got a school. Yeah. What's this? Where at? The whole thing? So, sis, you see that calendar? <laughs> we can't celebrate birthdays either, but we're going to do the everything in decent and in order. So you see on the calendar, right? What's the first day of the week? Sunday. That's the first day. Okay? And what's the seventh day? Saturday, right? All right, you, you go ahead and get a brother back his phone. You got that in Genesis? Go to the uh, one, chap chapter one. And I want verse uh, day and night, he called, verse five. Now, sis, first give me verse one. Watch this, read verse one. Genesis chapter one, verse one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So, you familiar with this, right? Now, watch this. Jump down to verse five. Verse five. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. What was the first day? The evening and the morning. So, the day started in the evening and it ended at evening. You understand that? So, for example, tonight, once that sun go down, it will be the evening. And a new day will be tomorrow evening. You understand that? That's how the days are counted. The days are not counted at 12 a.m. Oh, at 12 a.m. it's going to be Sunday. No. No. I'm going to read to you this book. All right. The book is called The Negro Questioning Part 4, The Missing Link. It's page 19. When Constantine went to ratify the Sunday worship law in 323 AD, it has been recorded that delegates came from around the world. 
It appears they were trying to compete with the worldwide Sabbath that occurred on the day of Pentecost. Right. So they was trying to compete with the Sabbath. That's why, that's why people think today, Sunday, is the Sabbath day. Sunday is the seventh day. And it's not. Because man changed that. Give me that in the Daniel. That's all I'm going to know. All praise. Read. Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 and he shall speak great, great words against the most high so that enemy okay that man will speak great words against the most high what was those great words that he spake against the most high that Christ was a white man you with me sis read and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. How did they wear out the saints of the Most High? Because they lied to our people. They confused our people. They wearing us out now because it's, it's hard for us to teach our people because our people have been destroyed so much by them. You understand that? Read. And think to change times and laws. It says that, that man will think to change times and laws. How did he do that? Because he said the day now starts at 12 a.m. That's when a new day is. But God says, no, the day starts at evening. You understand that? So the Sabbath began Friday sundown at evening. That's when the seventh day starts. And the Sabbath ends Saturday sundown at evening. That's when the, Sab the seventh day ends. You understand that, sis? Finish it. And they shall be given into the hand until a time and times and dividing of time. Right. So that's all I'm wondering at. So, sis, the day starts at evening. The seventh day Sabbath starts at evening. Give me a uh, uh, see what you will see in Exodus. So, sis, what else? How else do we keep the Sabbath day holy? Exodus chapter 16, verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. So, when he says tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath, this, that day was the sixth day. So he's, when he said tomorrow, he meant at evening, when the next day came. Okay, come. It will be the rest of the Holy Sabbath. You understand that? So now watch what he says. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which you will bake today, and see that you will see, and that which remaineth over lay up. Right. So he said, bake what you're going to bake before the seventh day at evening. Before the Sabbath kicking, cook what you're going to cook before Friday evening. You understand that? Because he knew, when do, when do people go to sleep and wake up? They go to sleep at night, they wake up in the morning, right? And you're going to want something to eat, right? So he's saying, cook your food before the Sabbath come in. Read. And that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. Right. What remains over, you're going to lay up to be kept in the morning so you can have something to eat. You understand that? Read. And they laid it up till the morning as Moses bade, and it did not stink. Neither was there any worm therein. Right. And that food did not go bad. This is what we are commanded. Say if you don't want your food cold, right? You can eat, you can make you a sandwich. You understand that? When I say cold, I'm talking about, for example, uh, say you make some broccoli and you don't want to eat the broccoli in the morning. You can make you a sandwich, okay? Some, just get you some cheese, some lunch meat. You know, I don't really like lunch meat myself, so I may make me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Or my wife, before the Sabbath came in, she, she made me some chicken on the skillet. And what do I do? I make a salad and I put that chicken in my salad. I have me a salad with chicken in it. Some of the brothers, they eat pasta salad. They eat sandwiches. You understand that? Because we have to keep the commandments. We cannot cook on the Sabbath day. All right, give me that in Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 31. And if the people of the land bring ware or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell. so. Now it says, if the people of the land bring where are any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell. What is today? The Sabbath, right? You see all these places of business is open. They are bringing where and they are bringing victuals. They are bringing items to sell on the Sabbath day. Read. That we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. That we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. Whatever you have to buy, you are given six days to buy it. On a Sabbath day, we are not supposed to buy and sell. Read. 
that we would not bite of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day. Uh -huh. And that we would leave the seventh year and the... So that we would not buy it on the Sabbath or the holy day. Okay? What's the holy days that was given to us? Huh? No, no. That's the Sabbath. A holy day is the Feast of Tabernacles. Right. The Passover. Right. The Feast of Pentecost. The Feast of Dedication. Those are holy days. You understand that? The reason why I have to say, I have to bring that out is because I heard you say something about your birthday. You know we're not supposed to be celebrating birthdays, right? Let's get that in Job. Read. Job chapter 3 and verse 1. After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. So, it says, after this Job opened up his mouth and cursed his day. Let me see. Go to verse 1. Because I wonder when his kids was keeping. That's, the, that's chapter 1. That's yeah, chapter 1. Go ahead. Job chapter 1 verse 3, his substance also was 70,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses. So it's just giving you what Job had. So Job had an abundance. Job had a lot. Read. So that this man was the greatest of all men of the east. Uh -huh. And his sons went and feasted in their houses. Uh -huh. Every so his sons went and feasted in their houses. What type of feast was this? Read. Everyone in his day. Everyone on his day. Okay? What is your day? Today, that day will be called birthday. Okay? Because that's the day people say, this day is about me. I want to celebrate me. Okay? So, Job's sons were celebrating their birthday. Read. And sit and call for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And they, and they had other people celebrate their birthday with them. Read. And it was so, when the days of the feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning uh -huh. and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. So Job repented for that. Now go to verse chapter 3. Job chapter 3 verse 1. After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. Job cursed his day because Job knew that that was self-worship. That was idolatry. Okay? When you celebrating your birthday, you celebrating your child's birthday, that is idolatry. You're celebrating that day for your child. Don't you know the satanic religion? That's the most uh that's the, that's the most evil day among the satanic worshipers. Celebrating birthdays because you're celebrating yourself. Right. The most high God didn't say celebrate your birthday. Right. You understand that? He didn't say do that. Yeah. The Most High God gave us holy days to God to live by. Celebrating Halloween, celebrating Christmas. We're not supposed to do that. You know, do you celebrate Christmas? You know it's in the Bible not to do that, right? Jeremiah 10. Yeah, sis. So you getting some understanding. Sis, what you need to do? What you need to do, sis? You need to get in contact with us, okay? Yes, our, our contact information is on that flyer. But let me read you this. Jeremiah 10. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Hear the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. So who's the most high God speaking to? The house of what? Israel. He's speaking to you, the Israelites. Read. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Stop. Because that's our problem right there, sis. We learned the way of the heathen. You understand that? Because the heathen gave us the Christmas day. The heathen gave us Halloween. The heathen told you to celebrate your birthdays. You understand that? The, he the heathen gave you Easter. Right. We're not supposed to celebrate Easter either. That's like... Read. Read. Hold on. Go ahead. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. The scripture says, be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. You know, our people, I see a lot of times on Facebook, Everyone, post, a lot of people posting, oh, I'm a Scorpio, oh, I'm a Sagittarius. You know, they looking at the horoscope, you know. That's that's being dismayed at the signs of heaven. That's for the heathen. The Most High God did not give that to us. You right. understand that? Read. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Right. The scripture says the heathen are dismayed at the signs of heaven. Read. 
For the customs of the people are vain. Uh -huh. so it says the custom of the people are vain. That's why the people, these heathens, celebrate their birthday. Because it's vain worship. Right. Read. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cut up a tree out of the forest. This is one of the customs that the heathen do. It says that they cut a tree out of the forest. Read. The work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. They do it with an axe. Normally when people cut that tree out the forest, it's always around Christmas day, right? You know, they try to go in there, they try to get the biggest tree. Read. They deck it with silver and with gold. When you put that Christmas tree up in your house, what you put on it? Ornaments. What color are those ornaments? Red, blue, white, silver, gold, you know? Time has adapted because now people use plastic trees with the little stencils at the bottom. But before, they didn't have all of that. They didn't, they didn't put those all, all, all the different colors on it. Before, it was just silver and gold. You know, that's why they, that's why, remember that old song the, uh, for, on Christmas, they sing the silver and gold, silver, you know, because that's what they used to do. Right. It says the heathen did that. You are not a heathen, that's you are right. an Israelite. Right. Read. They deck it with silver and with gold. Uh -huh. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. They right. move it nuts. Says, that, My bad. All praises. It says they fasten it with nails and with hammers that that tree would not move. You understand that? Be, but now they have the little stands that the tree would stand up. Okay? But before, they had to fasten it down. Read. They are upright as the palm tree. It says they are upright as the palm tree. The palm trees stand really tall and they go straight up. Okay? The uh, the tree that they use for Christmas is the evergreen tree, right? You know? That tree goes straight up and has a point at the top. You understand that? That's This is talking about Christmas. We're not supposed to be celebrating Christmas. That's right. You know? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.